Hello, Atmore. It's the Lauren and Friends Show. And now here's your host, Lloyd Alberton. This is Lloyd Alberton. And uh, we're talking uh, probably on Saturday morning here at uh, broadcasting on the local radio station WGYJ-LP. 93.5 FM. For those of you who uh, have friends outside the broadcast area, we're a small band station, so don't forget to just call them and let them know that they can uh, that we live stream. So our interview uh, here will be live streamed. Uh, they can go to the station site. That's uh, www.light935fm.com, and uh, there's a little button down there you can live stream. And plus, you can let your friends all know that we're archiving uh, the interviews. All the interviews that we do on this series, we're going to be uh, archiving them on YouTube. Uh, so all you got to do is just go to YouTube and type in Lloyd and Friends. And that and has to be A-N-D. Won't work with a little symbol thing there. Lloyd and Friends. I'm talking with one of my uh, favorite people in that more a guy that's always been kind and nice and i just find him well interesting uh, mr foster kaiser and uh, i don't know a lot about foster except i like him and we run into one another uh, in that more through the years from time to time but uh i wanted to know a little bit more about him and i thought you might would like to know a little bit more about him as well good morning foster good morning thanks for having me on now, Foster, I know some Kaisers uh, in Pensacola. In fact, I mean, not Pensacola, but in Atmore. Uh, in fact, my father used to work with an Edlo Kaiser uh, at Brooklyn Field years ago. But I don't think you're originally from this area, are you? Or are you? Well, my family is. I was not born here. Um, the Kaisers in Atmore spell their name K-I-Z-E-R. And... A lot of people may have known Rubilee Kaiser because she was a teacher for many, many years here in Atmore. And her husband, Jimmy Kaiser, was a principal. I know Jimmy Kaiser. Yeah, down in... Uh, He uh, was related to you. Yeah, and Jimmy Pat Kaiser was my first cousin. and He was a lieutenant colonel in the Marine Corps, retired, moved back here. and I know of him. Jimmy, Jimmy Pat was his name. Right. Right. Okay, now, uh, Jimmy Kaiser at the high school, when I, uh, he was a principal. In fact, he taught my mother as well at as Ernest a teacher Ward. at yeah. Ernest Ward. Yeah. Yes, he was. For me. And he was the principal. When I went down there, through about the 10th grade, that would have been early 60s, he retired. Yes. And uh, he was a little little skinny guy, white-haired. Yep. But people feared him. People loved him and feared him at the same time. You did not want to go see Mr. Kaiser. <laughs> he didn't talk much. He didn't say much. But, uh, yes, I remember him. He was a legendary school teacher and principal out in that area. Yes. So uh, what relation is he to he you? He was my, my dad's brother. He was my uncle. He was your uncle. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you are you are local then. Yeah. I was assuming all this time that you yeah, and, and, come and, from and somewhere else. Yeah, and an interesting side note um, – my dad and and uh, Jim Kaiser, the principal's brother, youngest brother, was killed in France in World War II and is still buried. Well, he's buried over there in uh, in France. Mm-hmm. And he was about five or six days after D Day, and he's killed in ambush by the Germans. So okay, okay. So uh, d- did you grow up here in Atmore? No, my dad was in the military. Um, he made a career out in the army, and I was born in Virginia. And of course, we followed my dad wherever he went. We went to Alaska, stationed there before it was even a state; it's still a territory. So um, I'm showing my well, age. Are you, you and I are, you, we just discussed this. We're the same age. I'm 74. Yes, you said 74. you are. When's your birthday? September. Mine's in, mine's in October. So yeah. <laughs> about we're, that? we're just a month apart. Yes. But I remember. I think I was in the sixth grade when they made Alaska a state. Does that sound? It was in the 50s, about. 50s, yeah. 54, 55, something. Well, mm, I may okay. be even a little bit later. I, well, than I that. don't remember. At that age, I don't remember the exact. And then, of course, but Hawaii I came in after elementary school that. when they did right. that. Right. Um, okay. So you lived in Alaska yes. before it was a state. And it, as a child, I, I was a, it was a wonderful experience and tons of snow and. Um, Cold as all get out, but it was it was fun. Then we moved to uh, state of Washington, 
and then back to Virginia again. And then my dad retired. Uh, well, he spent some time in um, um, Korea. So I never got to see my dad much. He was always deployed somewhere. What branch was he in? Army. Army. He was in the Army. And, and he retired? Uh, he retired out when we were in Virginia, and we moved back here when I was a senior in high school. So it was, it's really odd. So I went, you went to high school here? My, part of my your, senior year, senior and year. also part of my, in the first grade, because we were came back, my mom and I, my siblings and I came here, uh, waiting to be transferred to Alaska. So I was part of my first grade here and part of my senior year here. So it was, it's uh, the opening and closing of my education. So just can't get away from it. No, can you? no. And um, then soon after I graduated I, uh, high school, I went to one year at USA in Mobile, and it's during the Vietnam War. And uh, I have to admit, my grades weren't that good, and I was. I knew I was going to be drafted, so I went ahead and joined the Navy because I knew what the Army was. I was born and raised on Army bases and didn't want anything to do with the Army. So I decided to check the Air Force out in the Navy and ended up in the Navy and um, stationed on an aircraft carrier um, after boot camp and then went to Washington, D.C. to the Pentagon and was stationed in the uh, Naval Intelligence there and worked there until... Uh, my time was up, my four years was up, and got out, and then I stayed there, and because I had security clearances, went and worked for the Navy as a civilian, and then I was going to night school, trying to finish up my college, for, and that seemed to be taking an eternity, so I finally, in 1979, decided to cash in my retirement and go to school full-time at the University of South Florida, where I graduated. And then I went... Um, Majoring in... In business. Business, okay. And then I went back to <coughs> Washington, D.C. to try to find a job and ended up having two offers in California because I had past security experience. And um, Now, why D.C.? That seems a strange leap. To back to Washington D.C. Yeah, that was where the oh. Pentagon, you know, is, and that's where I went back to because I had a lot of contacts there. Oh, you were stationed there in the Navy yeah. at one point. Yeah. Okay. So you and had... then yeah, after I graduated college, I went back to try to get a job, and then ended up getting two offers from two contractors that I had worked with before in California. One was uh, Lockheed, and the other one was McDonnell Douglas. And I oh, took those the job good with, jobs. Yeah. Yeah, took a job with Lockheed. It Burbank Airport. And now, did you work in aircraft? Uh, yeah, well, does, in the Navy. Uh, in the Navy. Yeah, I mean, did, did you have something to do with aircraft that you well, ended up with? I was on an aircraft the, carrier, but I was other just, than the carrier, just yeah. in, in admin there. And, um, but I always had security clearances, and that's I a, see. Okay, security clearances are a, a step in the door to a lot of things that government stuff. Anyway. Exactly. So, at Lockheed, we worked at Burbank Airport. And we were building the stealth fighter there, the F-117, and nobody even knew it. And we were building it right under the nose of the public, and it was all, all classified. So we would, um, after we had finished, uh, they would box them up, and a big freighter would come in. We'd, in the middle of the night, we'd put load it up, and it would go out and take it to... Um, Area 51, where everybody thinks there's, you know, UFOs. And, well, this particular aircraft was uh, amazingly, um, radar couldn't pick it up. It just could not, pick, it had to, well, not a lot of people will understand this, but it had the radar cross-section of, a, of a, a bumblebee. So it was basically an invisible airplane. And during, um, when we were bombing Baghdad, I guess it was Baghdad. Those planes would go in, bomb, and go out before. The only way anybody knew it was when the bombs exploded. The uh, They couldn't pick it up on radar, so they didn't. People had no idea. They were just shooting anti-aircraft guns up in the air and they at nothing. They'd already gone back halfway home before anybody even responded because they couldn't pick it up. But anyway, that was just one 
it was wow. amazing we could build something under the nose of the public and them not know it. So yeah, the uh, technology alone is amazing. The oh, fact that oh, we yeah. can build it without anybody knowing. Well, that that so. that airplane they said had a um, it. it if it wasn't for the computers, it would fly like a rock because it, it would make they, the computers made thousands of corrections per second to keep it stable in the air. So it was a huge technological uh, leap. Unbelievable. And, and that, that was, that was it that. sounds like that was early 90s, maybe? Yes. Uh, uh, so we're 30 80s. years down the road. You yeah, can't only 80s, imagine. Yeah. And of course, uh, that was kept. The uh, classified the public didn't even know it existed until, of course, we then we had to start deploying it, and you couldn't, you could look at it, but you couldn't pick it up on radar. So it was very interesting. Um, my responsibility was to make sure that it was kept secret and that everybody got their security clearances that worked on it, and that was a long process because they had to do background investigations on right. everybody, and it took lots of time. And, and now, that. how long were you at that job? I was there about seven years and then I moved to uh, McDonnell Douglas in Orange County, California again because it worked in security and I worked there for oh I can't remember how many more years and then Boeing bought out McDonnell Douglas and then I retired and my retirement check comes from Boeing and I never really actually worked for Boeing but I don't care where the check comes from as long as it comes in. So, okay, okay. Anyway, then I moved back here. Um, so I was wondering why you came, but you retired from yeah, the bo from yeah. that industry. And then okay. moved back here. Um, I, I was married at the time there, and, and my wife didn't want to come back here. She wanted to go somewhere else. And so we split, it very amicably split, split up. And then we went, um, I came back here and bought, the old home place, which was um, out near the casino. And That's the house, the boarding. It was, it's a, a bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast. Right, right. That was your old home place there. Yes, my mom was born on that spot, and she died on that spot. Not many people can say that. She was 89, I believe, when she passed away. So it's the third house on the spot. Um, Rodney Owens, my cousin. Uh, Rodney's your cousin. First cousin. Okay. And he built the house, and then I bought it from him. <laughs> And his mother, Maria, was living now. Qu next door. Quickly, so so Rodney's your first cousin. Mm -hmm. So, um, let's see, he, how are you related to Rodney? Your his mother's? dad and my mom were siblings. His dad and your mom, right? Okay. And um, his mother lived next door until she passed away, and now Rodney's back there, at the house he was raised in. So, mm -hmm. uh, I I love having he and Donna there. Um, they're we're very close. So anyway, I, I bought the house and I had a, an older sister, um, Louise, that was living with, with me. And my family had gone to England quite a few times and we stayed in bed and breakfast a lot. And I came back and said, you know, she was retired, but she needed a little bit of an income. So I said, well, let's, let's see if we, if bed and breakfast would work here at Atmore. We've got a lot of, People saying, you know, who's going to come to Atmore and stay in a bed and breakfast? You know, this is just not going to work. Well, that's been now 20 years or so or more. And I've had people come from all over the world. I mean, as far away as China, South America, Sweden, all over Europe, all over the United States. Do you advertise in the uh, I'm magazines? On, for... um, I'm on Airbnb. <coughs> I'm, uh, I have a website and on Facebook. I don't, uh, that's about all the advertisement I get. And I have shifted more to long-term guests right now because I'm older and it's easier on me. I don't have to change sheets every day. And I converted um, a barn out back behind the house into two apartments. And there constantly people, you know, put my name on the list when the opening comes up. So... And then in the house, now, I have the, two these are people out of town. People? Uh, no, they're actually um, they well. Or just uh, I have one lady that she's from Atmore, and she's she's older, and um, she said she wants to live there till she dies. She's been there a couple years, but up up in the second floor of my house, I have a lady that's been there going on eight years, 
and she's a pharmacist for the tribe and mm-hmm. um, she's become a really good friend she's like a sister now so the people that end up staying end up becoming more like family members than than guests and the other one i have a a, a local lady that's renting it i get um the tribe has been very good about providing me business um if they hire say a doctor that's coming in and or anybody until they find a permanent home they'll come and stay with me and sometimes that could be six to eight months and in the fall i have uh, peanut inspectors that come in from the state and they've been coming in for like five or six years now every year they come and stay about three four months so Anyway, that's pretty much um, the um, bed and breakfast business is, is very interesting. Uh, I only serve breakfast, of course, um, and I've never had, I can honestly say I've never had a bad guest, so it, I've been very lucky. Now, I, you have to, I can tell on the telephone when someone calls if they're drunk or <laughs> You know, if it's two o'clock in the morning, I, I'm just not getting up. You're not a hotel. It's just not going to happen. But I get a lot of people that call late at night, and I can tell they're drunk and they're looking for a place to stay. They've probably been up at the casino and and a little bit o- overserved and don't want to drive somewhere. So, but I, I and and I, I'm not going to rent it out for what I call a booty call. You know, I, I just, I hear I don't rent it out by the hour. I said, you know, there's other places you can get accommodations for that. It's amazing the amount of uh, tourist attraction that the um, the casino is to, to Atmore. And all the hotels up there stay full almost all of the time, and especially on the weekends. It, 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 may, it just amazes me. And the tribe now, I understand, has bought all the hotels, so they... You know, oh, really? All the hotels around there, mm-hmm. the tribe has bought Absolutely. Them. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Um, the uh, So they have the casino hotel and then the three hotels that are that are there, uh, near near the exit there on, on exit 57. So they're good about calling me when they're full, too, and saying, do you have a room? And, and uh, Now, do you handle all the, the, uh, the physical work of uh, maid service and all that? Do you do all I, that yourself? I do. Or do you... I, I do. Um, periodically, I'll have um, a cousin or something come in and help clean. But I do laundry. I do the uh, the clean of the rooms. And as I said, as I get older, it's it's easier if I rent it by the month. Cause that way, I, there's not a turnover every night. And mm-hmm. it, it's just like a small hotel. You've got to. Uh, you know, you got to have the right sheets and the towels and the amenities and and keep it clean. Mm-hmm. I don't ever want a guest to come in and say, you know, your house is not clean or your room's not clean. I even ironed the pillowcases. So there's creases on the pillowcases and whoever rents it can see that no one else has slept on that pillow. And, of course, the sheets are always clean. So... Little trick of the trade there. Well, uh, you've had the house up for sale. Before, I have had or it, is for, it for sale now. Yeah, about for five years. It's. I'm asking a lot. Of course, it's a. It's an income pro, um, producing Asset. business. Yeah. And. I yeah. I'm, I'm ready to start a new chapter in my life as far as, as that goes. Now I have, many other things in, that I'm involved in that keep me busy busy other than bed and breakfast that's just sort of a side thing I'm also involved in I'm the executive director of the pride of Atmore and of course we're have purchased the the old uh, theater and the old hardware store next to it okay yeah I want to definitely want to talk about that yeah. now moment. that is uh, that's my primary focus at the moment myself and um, the people on the board are I, it's, I have an amazing board and an amazing group of volunteers that for four or five years now we've been busting our behinds trying to raise money of course the project started out all we want to do is as Myrna Monroe said was just paint the front of the theater well 
Now, who, did you were, were you the uh, motivating force? No, Bob. My on? cousin Bob Giddens Bub. was okay. the. Um, he and Nancy well, I knew Bob was in, was involved. Yeah, in. Bob. Bob was got the uh, our five hundred one c three nonprofit established. Okay, and he's the um, chairman of the board. Okay, and uh, of course he's a cousin, and so. I saw what was going on. I said, well, I'd like to join you. So, well, then we went out and we started recruiting other people to help us. And, and we have a, a phenomenal team and I've learned to write grants and with Dale Ash, who's the other grant writer and I get pushed those through constantly started, um, started out with, we won a Delta regional authority grant, and um, oh my gosh, that's been about four years ago. And it was only for forty thousand dollars, and uh, it was a matching grant. Uh, it's like a twenty thousand dollar grant. It was a matching grant, and we were only three in the entire state of Alabama. There was only, I think, maybe fourteen in the whole United States, and we won one of those, which was for us remarkable. Um, prior to that, if we got a five hundred dollar donation, we thought, oh my God, we're in. This is huge. Well, now it's turned out being a oh, pushing over a four million dollar pro project, so we are constantly trying to raise money. The tribe gave us a million dollars, uh, which was that really cemented everything in place, and to them we'll be eternally grateful. They've been hugely uh, generous to this to this area in supporting pro projects, so. We got that now we're still about a half a million short because of when COVID hit everything prices started skyrocketing and building cost materials cost just went off the chart yeah I mean, especially lumber and steel so we signed a contract with rolling construction and they have had experience in restoration of historic buildings and we're getting nearly a million dollars in state um, historic tax credits and since we're a non-profit once it's complete the state will just write us a check for that amount so it's not it's maybe eight hundred thousand something like that but that's mm -hmm. money it's like money in the bank but we can't get it until after we complete so we've arranged a bridge loan with uh, with United Bank and they've been very good in helping us. And so until, you know, but anyway, it's going to be around a $4 million project. So we're still trying to get, raise another 500,000. Wow. Yeah. And I, I remember uh, I interviewed Bub on a few years ago on another program. And we talked a little bit at that time. It was nickels and dimes. Yes. It yes. was working on the first hundred thousand. Yes. So it, now you're talking about me. Yes, we, we and you know I can see it. I see it in that more. I, I see a lot of projects all over the place. Oh, uh, and it's, and you know what I'm? I drove by uh, that new. I call it the box car park over what there. What is that? That's that's going to be for entertainment, and it's going to have this little stage on it, and it's got a canopy built out over it. Okay. So we can have local artists or an artists that want to come through and and it, you know. How about Put that? on a show, and it'll be parking too. And I now, saw now. Will the, will the uh, sound system be throughout the town, or just in that area? There? Just in that area. Just I in that, okay. Now I I saw the mayor the other morning. Uh, I had to go into city hall to pay uh, my lodging taxes, and I said that I drove by that, and it just made my heart happy to see that. I mean, it's just that's quite amazing. It's, it's very. Uh, it, it's such a a great thing atmore is just really exploding right now to to the to the good you could see all kinds of things going on our project in south main street and the united bank's done some wonderful things on main street of course there's um i know people that are buying in fact i don't think there's any for buildings for sale on downtown atmore anymore there's and people have bought up the vacant buildings and have plans have plans to uh, renovate and restore the building, those buildings, and put businesses in there. Now I don't know what kind of timeline is there on that. Um, our project, we're hoping to be up and operational in early fall, maybe 
August, September. The other projects. That's, that's right there, those three buildings, those the hardware two stores. Buildings, yeah. Now, the hardware the, store and, and the movie theater. And, and the, the theater, right. And th that will be an arts and cultural center. And there will be a, well, they've already knocked doors through both buildings. So you could go walk from one building to the other in interior. Mm -hmm. And it's it's going to be amazing that we're expanding the stage um, to accommodate bigger performer performances. The first floor of the hardware store will have a, a entertainment venue and a bar. It will have a, a prep kitchen, and then upstairs. I went in. There will be a. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, these things happen. Okay. Anyway. All right. Foster's got to figure out how to turn his phone off. These things happen. Yeah. <laughs> no big deal. So yeah. Upstairs on the uh, second floor of the um, hardware store, we're going to have a recording studio, which is an expensive thing to do. I guess. It's because of all the equipment and we are going to be looking for someone to run that because none of us on the staff, our board of directors, know how to run a recording studio, I promise you. So for recording music or? Yes, music. Uh, um, you can make a CD. You can... Uh, and compete with Nashville a little bit, Exactly. Huh? And we have been teaming with um, Dolphin Street Sound in Mobile. They have been sort of our, our guide through this on the recording studio, and they're amazing no this is all city owned property no yeah. who, who owns this property are the okay then we do the pride of atmore owns it. pride of atmore okay. yeah and there's no non-profit yeah and there's no mortgage on either building it's they're well, both paid oh, for. wow okay so the the recording studio uh, is going to be sort of we're hoping to be sort of like an outreach program from dolphin street sound and they're a, a grammy winning organization in mobile mm-hmm there will also be classrooms, a dance studio, and there will also be a uh, artist resident apartment upstairs. So we can have an artist come in, stay for free, give them it's a little apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll stay for free as long as they teach for three months. We'll give them a little stipend to help, you know help pay for expenses, but they have to teach whatever their craft is, whether it's music or pottery or painting or writing or coding whatever but we'll have a ability to have at least for three months at a time a, a resident now who's, artist. whose idea was this this sounds like, like a, a unique i, I would have never thought of that going I, in I, there i can't take i don't i can't personally thank credit but it's just the it just the, evolved uh, into that yes the uh, board of directors everything's come from well i tell you the the recording studios idea came from an in interview with the high school local high school students. We went in and we asked them and said, "Okay, what does Atmore need? What do you want that will keep you here at Atmore?" We interviewed over 500 people mm -hmm. uh, in that particular vein. Where, what do you want to see in Atmore? And what does Atmore need? So we had a list of a, a wish list. Uh, uh, you know, one thing came up. We want an ice cream. Store well, we got an ice cream store. We Pride did. of Atmore didn't do it, of course, but and it's still here and it's still operational. Seems like it's doing well. Yes, and food there is very good. Um, so after after we interviewed everybody, we we did a master plan. We had um, we hired a um, a team from McClure Engineering that came in and they helped us write a. Um, a master plan that it's very comprehensive. It even goes in the out years on programming and what what we can charge and what we can expect to get in. And but being a nonprofit, we're not here to make money. We wish, we need to, of course, pay expenses. And presently, uh, there's no one. We have no paid employees. Everything is volunteer. Now, once we go operational, well, the my position will be a paid position, and then. We'll have to be hiring staff too, sure. so it's is creating jobs in that more. The um, 
the classes that we're going to be offering are anything from a GED to a painting to dance to coding. If we could find a teacher, we can offer a class. And we're going to be offering these things at prices that are going to be affordable. At more, um, I don't know what the average income is for here, but it's, it's probably one of the lowest in, in the country. And yeah. so that we take that factor in to consideration when we are going to be charging admission to events or classes. You know, you know, I talked to uh, Phil Johnson uh, just recently over at Gecka, mm-hmm. and yeah. he uh, was telling me how many, and I, I never realized this from their uh, shows that they do over there, uh, he was naming off this one and that one and that one who had uh, gone on to make a career in music from uh, doing their uh, shows over here Absolutely. to Nashville and New York. And it has always been, if you wanted to make a, I don't know where the recording studio, I know you could go to Nashville and do it. I think the uh, the boy from Alabama in Fort Payne, I think there might be a studio down there, Alabama. But I don't. Uh, oh, muscle as far shows, as muscle, muscle shows, shows is huge. Yeah, huge. Yeah. Uh, where people can go, yeah, per, uh, that that are very talented that want to need this kind of service. Where, where would you go now? I guess. Well, I think you could go to Mobile. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Dolphin Street Sound probably has. I, okay. Well, I'm sure they have that capability. But they're again but, the but cost have, factors. But are having high. this. Um, I mean, I never really heard of Fort Payne, Alabama until they, somebody know, put it on the map. Somebody yeah, put it on the way, map. Yeah. Uh, this could put that more on the map. Absolutely. And, you know, all the, a lot of the local churches are interested in. Absolutely. They could come in and record the choir yeah. and make a CD and they could sell it to their own congregation. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I keep in, emphasizing this is not a private organization. This is Atmore's. This belongs to Atmore. This is a nonprofit. You know, the community owns this, even though. The, the, well, the, somebody has to hands on make exactly, it happen. Exactly, and that's the pride of Atmore. Yeah. But but it it's it's for the community. It's by the community, it, and we have reached out to every organization or every. Uh, neighborhood, everything we can to get people involved. And we're con- constantly, you know, we need volunteers. We Anybody that wants to volunteer a couple hours a week um, to come in and help us, especially once we're operational, boy, we, we'd love to have you. It's it, anything from sweeping the floors to, it, you know, as I said, we're going to have to hire somebody to run the recording studio. But you know, it, it does create jobs, and and it we will be able to rent the um, uh, venues uh, spaces out for re- wedding receptions or uh, company parties. We'll be able to have caterers come in, and there, of course, there'll be the bar there. Now, you first had to go in and buy these buildings, exactly. Right? Yes. How many buildings do you have there? Probably two, just the two. Yeah. Now, first we we just did. Do, the, do you see this happening? Uh, I mean, I was driving by there just a day or two ago, and I was thinking, I come in to the wife, this is going to be so nice here. What are they going to, it's going to pay all the rest of the town down here. They're going to have to start dressing up. Well, and, and that's, there's on another the organization that I've been involved with for many years is uh, Main, Street at, uh, Main Street, Alabama. Now, Main Street, Alabama, or now Main Street, Atmore, uh, Nikki Bryant's our, <clears throat> our director for that. Uh, I'm on one of the subcommittees for that. It's a great organization, and they will help downtown business um, businesses with grants for facades, for um, signage. Um, they have had people come in from the, uh, Main Street, Alabama, and give talks and lessons and guidance on uh, revitalizing the downtown and you know they've done designs on on how the downtown could look which is re- more remarkable with 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 uh new signage and new facades and and new parking and new uh landscaping 
and it's just amazing. And and they've done some, um, given out some grants already for signage. They've uh, they were put working on crosswalks. And if we can do something, I saw, to, I saw that yeah, in the paper. Yeah, yeah, on um, the corner of David David Landis did those, didn't he? Or not Landis? Is it Landis? Yes, no, yeah. it is Landis Designs. Landis did, Design. they, okay. Yeah, painted that uh, on the corner of uh, Ridgely and Trammel. Uh, you'll there's a crosswalk that looks like bricks painted, and we you know we'd like to do that across Main Street, but Main Street is a state highway, and 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 dealing with the state department of transportation is no easy task and there's lots of regulations and restrictions so another thing on ridgely street the lights that are strung across uh ridgely street that come on at night are that's that's from main street at more so they're they're making some plans and and coming along uh, with ideas and working with the business owners to help them with with grants uh, to spruce up the front of their buildings mm -hmm. and and even helping design the new look for their business fronts and and even in the back of the buildings so that's that's an amazing organization they also uh i'm the vice president for the uh, atmore historical society and we have been successful in getting that boxcar moved from i mean the caboose moved from Rachel Patterson to Heritage Park, and it's, nothing's free, of course. But we got a grant from CSX for six thousand dollars to move that. And then there's a group that's uh, going to volunteer to repaint it, to bring it up so it really looks good. We have other plans coming in for um, for the Heritage Park. We need a new roof on the, the Watson cabin that's expensive so we're trying to raise money to have that done um and we have future plans for other things that we want to do with with uh heritage park there and so the board of directors of that organization you know we're, we're writing grants and everything one of the other projects that we have is that we call it william station cemetery over there by the railroad tracks that uh, it's off of Trammell Street, and a lot of people don't even know that cemetery's there. It's a very small, very old cemetery, and we did get a uh, a grant to clean that up, and and you know we want to put a fence around it, and we want to keep it up, and and it, they, there's some very old graves in there. Uh, I think even a couple from the Civil War. It's not an active graveyard. They're not still. No, no, you're, there's no it's old. people being buried there right now. I'm trying to but, remember just where that is. I kind of do. It's sort of, it looks like, like like someone's backyard, basically, and, and you have to go walk right past somebody's front door to get to it. <coughs> but it's it's um, it's been there for just forever, it seems. So um, we want to bring that up to speed. That is a project for um, the Historical Society. We've also put a plaque over at the what used to be the training school on Martin Luther King to um, a historical marker there. And I think we're working on another historical marker. Oh, they put one up for um, Railroad Railroad Bill over there by the railroad little our little railroad station. Okay. Um, so, you know, there, there's a lot of things going on and we're, you know, and of course the, the, um, historical society, it's constantly looking for member the people that want to come join us and serve on the board or serve as a volunteer. Carolyn Kahn used to be involved with that, didn't she? I don't know that name. So. Carolyn Kahn, she taught school and retired, but she was involved with the, uh, Historical Society yeah. at one and, time. And, and then the Historical Society is, has the Welcome Center, so we're looking for volunteers to sit uh, so we can open that back open. We, we had to close for COVID. But we're looking for vol volunteers to spend, you know, like and that, four that's just, hours. That's just down down there at the end of uh, South Main. Or right, right, yeah. and uh, Ridgely? Not Ridgely. No, that's... Um, Ridgely right there where the United Bank was there. 
Well, it's on the spot where Rachel Patterson School. Remember Rachel Patterson School was. That's there. where it's at. Yeah. Oh, that's where it's at. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I was thinking it was downtown. Yeah. That's well. it's. It was that little building, the PV Web Building, was moved from the. It was up in the, next to the North Branch of. Okay. First National Bank. There's there uh, <clears throat> there are still uh, the building hasn't been closed that long, Joe. Oh, oh, the country charms country charms some yes that is what's been happening purchased. With that? that's, that's been, been purchased. purchased and now i it's by a, a gentleman that's bought up several buildings in town and i'm not sure what his plan i know he'd like to rent them out <clears throat> uh but i don't know what status of that is It'll be you know that once he purchased them that's in his hands now mm-hmm. um well, that shows a lot of optimism when people. It does. Are, it does indeed. I mean, real estate in that more is just drying oh. up. Well, you know, I I, I worry too if 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 I sell where I am. What where am I going to move? You know, there's the, the selection <laughs> now has become very slim. It's been good for the realty people because they prices have gone up and um, property values have skyrocketed. People have made some good money. If you move, you got to move to somewhere else. That's right. I mean, if you sell, you got to move to somewhere else. So, it's uh, and I, I think, ooh. well, you get, <coughs> excuse me, you get our age. <clears throat> My wife and I talk about this as we do when we get a little long in the tooth here. Scaling down, mm-hmm. you know. Oh, well, yes, what are we going to scale down to? You know, yeah, it, where I would mean, that be? Yeah. Well, I would. I love mean, what, to... what what would we pay for our house mortgage? I told my wife, we can't rent a little two-bedroom apartment for that. Exactly. Um, Where would we live? I, my, well, I don't call this my dream or, or my one of my goals. I would like to live downtown and on the second floor over uh, and have a business rented. If I, either I run it or somebody rent it to somebody else on the first floor. Now, there are places we could build buildings like that. Um, and and have residents upstairs and businesses downstairs. You know, I'd like to do that. Getting uh, with some other people that are at the same interest and and uh, and do that, and it would be an income-producing building for you and you live upstairs. And of course, it, like at our age, I'd have an elevator put in. <laughs> you know, years ago. I worked down uh, in Pensacola. I was a stockbroker down there. I managed a, uh, about a 30-man st- uh, firm. And uh, I rented an apartment down right above uh, Sanger Theater mm-hmm. down there. And uh, I, I lived there for about a year. It was a unique experience because I had lived up here in the country and uh, lived out in Brat at the time, out in the country. And so we moved down there, and it was... Uh, had the gates, you know, you were just walk, walking downtown all the time. Mm-hmm. I'd never had that mm-hmm. experience with all the bums, but you could just go out and walk downtown and go to any restaurant, and it was uh, it was really a delightful experience. But uh, we would go in that right off, right beside the Sanger on that iron gate and go up some stairs, and there were four big, spacious apartments up there. And uh, it was it was really made me think of all the movies I've seen about New York where people live yes, in yes. in city. You know? Yes, if, if if you've never experienced living it's quite in a, charming. a big city, it's it's totally different, and it could be absolutely wonderful experience. At more, it, it I I would like to see more resident second floor residents uh, on buildings in downtown. Um, that's my dream. Even if I have to build it. I, um, now, what about this old jewelry building next door to um, First National down there? Uh, that that's uh, kind of dilapidated. I think the city has condemned it. But that's what, what I've are they heard do with too. That? But I, I, I can't speak to that a lot. Only thing I know is um, I know it's people have offered to purchase it from the owner, and and I'm not real can't even remember who the owner is. Um, I think I've met him, but I, I don't know him personally. I understand he's got plans for it, so I don't know. Um, that that building either needs to be totally Something. restored or knocked down. Yeah, I, and it's kind of a sore. I I'd understood that First National had offered to buy it earlier on, but I, they, they wouldn't did, sell it. I to understand, them. and 
they, I guess they couldn't come to a, an agreement on the price. And so First National bought everything around it and went on with, with, with their plans. And First National, of course, did that little park there next to them where the right. Christmas tree is will be every year. And then the two bu- buildings on the corner of Church Street and Main there, they redid. And so, but I understand the same person that bought uh, the old Country Charms bought those two buildings. Now, I I don't, that's what I've heard. I, I can't say that for certain, but that's what I've heard. And then I understand they bought another building or two in town, and I'm not sure where. But that is, that's someone that's optimistic about Atmore, and they live in Pensacola. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's saying something. Well, I think the uh, PCI has brought a lot of change to Atmore. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, uh, that was a long process. Uh, I had uh, Eddie Tellis. Uh, we, I, Eddie's my first cousin. Yeah, a fine so, man. So uh, mm. we call still call him Leon. You know how you have the earlier name right, <laughs> you right. become somebody else. Uh, but we were talking about uh, all it took to get that. You know, uh, Eddie used to work at Monsanto, and he funded out of his pocket going to D.C. and getting all of that. He and before they were Buford rolling, yeah, yeah, and, and and Calvin, and there was a lot of people when there was nothing there. Oh, I remember nothing there. I remember it, it, they were just so poor. Uh, the porch community was just horribly run down, and 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 those folks had nothing. And I don't begrudge anything they get, and I'm very proud of that tribe. Um, I'm well. You, I, I you, can track my lineage back to Sahoy too, but I don't uh, have enough to be on the rolls. But, but. you know, back. Uh, I went to school out here at Walnut Hill at Ernest Ward. Atmore's kind of where you came to town, mm-hmm. you know, on Saturday to get uh, bullets and gunpowder and stuff <laughs> for us country folks. Um, but we went to school with a lot of the um, Indian uh, guys and girls, and I I never really knew they were even Indian. I mean, I knew they were Gibbs. I knew they were Indian, but... It wasn't, we've never lived separately in this area. I mean, I know we have. I mean, mm-hmm. I know the history, that the school and all that. But but me personally, from what I've seen, and uh, yeah, I'm 74 years old, um, I've never, I've had relatives that are, that are Indian, mm-hmm. you know, because we've do. always mixed yeah. in this area. And uh, it's all it's all one big family. So I'm uh, as you I'm happy to see them do well, and they certainly have been responsible citizens. I think. Oh, and <laughs> what they've been generous and what they. I, I cannot, I cannot say enough good about what they what they've done, and and I know people. There are people. They're anti gaming or anti game gambling people, and my argument with them is, don't go. Don't spend your money. You know, you don't 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 you force to you to go there. Um, I'm not a gambler. I have, you know, I don't have any desire to to throw my money away. And I'm not saying it's throwing it away, but but I go up there to the uh, other amenities. I've gone to the cooking school. I can't tell you how many times the theaters, the the yeah. fire restaurant is bowling alley, top top notch. Restaurant. That's stuff we needed here in Atmore. Absolutely. And, I, you know, I feel like it's pr- it's probably not a real profit center for them, uh, but they do it. Oh, I think it's a profit center. But you think uh, it is? Oh, yeah. The theater? Uh, it's empty most of the time when I go in there. Uh, oh, oh, you mean some of the side like things the, like the, the theater? Theaters. Yeah, the theater. I don't, the bowling alley probably does, yeah. does well. Well, I think right now with COVID, people are are shying away from that. But Well, maybe. Um, and, and if this covid issue ever resolves itself i think you'll see more people going up there I, you know i've shied away since um it you know even though i'm vaccinated and boosted and everything else i still don't like big crowds and and do shy you think away covid covid has really changed our whole society hasn't it it has indeed it, it is the and, way and we, some of it won't go away some of it's no, going to yes, become it, status quo well, i think it, it's brought uh attention to our health care system and to the way we take care of ourselves, how we, it's, it, this is 
What are some things you don't like about it? What's what's been some of the negatives? I, well, I'm not. I, I, guess, I don't particularly like wearing masks, but I do. Yeah. I get frust- frustrated when I go into somewhere like um, Walmart and half the people aren't wearing them and half are. And and especially right now with this Omicron variant just taking over, you know, even if you're vaccinated, you can still get it. It's just and. and Escambia County, well, Alabama, has got a very, very low vacci- vaccination rate, and I don't the, understand uh, it. The nurse was, I went to the doctor the other day to get uh, a shot. <clears throat> I get one by a reciferin shot for cold, you mm-hmm. know, and uh, I'm vaccinated. I got my booster shot and everything, so I went over there, and she was talking about the Omicron. Uh, and she said, well, it's not that bad. It's just um, like having sniffles or a cold for three to five days. I said, I don't understand. Why are we panicking about it then? Well, why don't we let ourselves? Are, I, I worry that are we getting so protective of ourselves that we're not building our immunity systems because we have to get these diseases and get over them and build well, immunity but, system. But I, I, I agree with you, but I think, you, think, you know, it may, may not be that bad, but for someone that's healthy, but if someone's got underlying health issues, uh, it could be fatal. I mean, it could it could push them right over the edge. I think, and, and I'm glad to hear that I'm, that it's not uh, a horrible like. You that's what to be, that's what the nurse intubated. told me. I've, I've read yeah. that. Yeah, it's not uh, as bad as COVID nineteen. But you know, people that the anti-vaxxers that I talk with and stuff, I go, did you get your smallpox and your polio and your tetanus and and, and all of those others? Do you get the flu shot every year? And then you know they answer normally yes to that, and I go. Well, you know, I don't understand why you don't. And and then, and then I've heard some of those people that were the anti-vaxxers that get it and they end up passing away. And and I hate that. Number one, it's not just them; it's their whole families affected, their communities affected. Uh, it's it's a strange time. And I've always gotten all of these shots, and I've I got my shots, and uh, I got the uh, the booster. And uh, I'm not a faithful mask wearer. I just don't. Uh, I think that goes to my political leanings. <clears throat> I I, um, I think of the Jews uh, in Nazi Germany with those Star of David on their coats. And, and uh, there's just something in my mind about, you know, just uh, put on a mask and walk around in circles and tap your foot three times. And I'm not sh- I, I'm I'm not persuaded, I guess, that the masks are really that effective. Well, we, we had COVID-19 spreading like wildfire. Mm-hmm. We said, well, we've got this great vaccine now. So now we got the vaccine. They say, "Well, the vaccine doesn't work. You got to wear your mask." I feel like government is on my back, uh, supervising, micromanaging me on something, just trying to see if I'll do it. That's how I feel. Well, and, and That's and not respect, a scientific yeah, argument. No, no, and I respect your views for that. I don't think I don't I don't agree with. Well, no, no, I don't agree agree with it. But I'm not going to sit here and try to change your mind. Yeah. Um, that's your your free choice to do that. It's not that it just protects you; it protects you, it protects you from infecting other people too, and that's what I I, I think people need to appreciate. Um, you think we'll ever get over this? <sighs> ever? I I think it's going to be. <laughs> I mean, just people like, are just tired of it. Oh, no question. It, no, in, indeed. So I think it's going to be ending up being like an annual flu. And we'll have to get vaccinated each year for whatever variant that. Yeah, which that, I get that, that too every year. Absolutely, I, I, it's and, been years since I've had the flu, but I still remember it, it was oh, bad. And you don't want to do and it. I don't want to do it again. again. Yes. So I get that flu shot. Yeah. Just hopeful that it works. Yeah, I mean, there's other things out there. There's there's uh, shingles. There's pneumonia vaccines, and so there's all kinds of things that that we have opportunity to help boost our immune system and i personally take advantage of, of the every time it's offered and yeah i i really don't um uh as as my brother greg likes to say sometimes uh, uh, just because i'm paranoid that doesn't mean they're not out to get me <laughs> 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 I like that. I like that. But no, I, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't think the government's trying to kill us all. Uh, you know, how well it works, the efficacy of it, I, I don't know. 
But I certainly don't think the government's out to kill us all. Oh, no. And and, uh, and, 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 and err on the safe side. Yeah. And and no one's making you do it. If you don't want to take this But vaccine, in some cases, they are now with these. I mean, that's, well, a, no, that's an issue with these companies. It's your choice not to. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're or, saying, well, if you but, want to participate, if you want to work here, that's fine. If you don't, that's your choice, but you can't work here. You can't work, yeah. Okay. yeah and, and, well, but that's, that's, a, that's individual's not choice. choice. Not, not, they're not... Uh, it might be a mandate. I mean, it's like in the military. Well, you know, if get it or get oh, out. Oh, when I went to Vietnam, they gave me shots everywhere. Oh, I didn't know Lord. what they were. I know. It, I just took them. Uh, yeah. It, and how many batteries of, of, of uh, you know, I, I was in being raised in the uh, military bases for, far back as I can remember. Every time we moved, we got shots. And uh, I, so... Who knows? Yeah, and, it's a good thing. I'm not. I'm not arguing against it. Uh, but uh, I'm just saying that uh, it really has changed our whole society. Absolutely, it do, it has. The whole dynamic of living has changed. So, well, Foster, we've got a couple of uh, fifty. Six, we've got about two minutes. Okay. One thing I'd uh, like to also so, bring up is fact that now Atmore has a historic preservation commission, and I'm serving on that. Also, it's. Downtown Atmore has been established a, as a historic district. Our two buildings are on the national and federal, federal and state registries of historic buildings. And so now when people start renovating the exterior of their buildings, they're going to have to go through the um, Historic Preservation Commission to make sure that they're, what they're doing is in line with what the guidelines are going to be put out for that. It's some people think it's taking away their freedoms, but it's a good thing. So we don't have somebody paint purple polka dots downtown. Mm -hmm. We'll see if we can work with them and convince them to do, you know, something a little different that keeps it more in line with our historic nature of downtown. Mm -hmm. Well, that sounds kind of like some of my projects around here. I have to check with my wife first. <laughs> <laughs> There's no telling how tacky I'll have yeah. things that can. Well, we want to make sure that we're not a, uh, a police Gestapo type thing saying you can and cannot do this. Come to us and let us work with you, even before if you even have. Make designs. sure it's all working together, Absolutely. instead of just a split splash. Yeah. So, of stuff. so it's it's the historic commission, the historic uh, society, the Pride of Atmore, Main Street Atmore, the Chamber of Commerce, and and now if somebody others. wants to get involved, I've got about a minute, so I want to get this in. Uh, who do they contact and how, how they do can, they do they this? They can contact me and and I can lead them for in any uh, of the organizations I'm involved with. It, they can call me at 251-583-6009. We have uh, tons of good organizations, Rotary, Lions Club, uh, that do amazingly wonderful things in this town. Uh, the Yellow Hat Society, um, my gosh, I can't. I just can't think of of all of the organizations, but there's some wonderful organizations that do amazing things in town, and and people a lot of people are unaware of of the opportunities. And I and, think they are. I yeah. think they are. And I I really really appreciate you taking time. I know you got my a, pleasure a, a busy Andy. schedule to come on and be yeah. on the show, and we hope we get uh, a lot of listeners. And um, the, my primary objective is for. At more to to know and appreciate a guy like Foster Kaiser well, and I, all the work that you've done and you and others. Yes, it's, but, uh, uh, we need to be aware of our effort. workers. It's not yeah. not not one person does it. It's it's we have a one a lot of wonderful people here in town. Thanks for coming by, Foster. Thanks we, for having we, me. We appreciate you, and uh, let's just hope that uh, people enjoy the program and we get one or two step forward. Thanks, appreciate it. Thanks for listening to The Lloyd and Friends Show with Lloyd Overton. 